All right, Jillian, thanks so much. Hillary Clinton continuing her crusade against President Trump. I'm going to keep speaking out. Apparently, you know, my former opponent is obsessed with my speaking out. Apparently, there was another somebody told me tweet today. <laughs> Honestly, between tweeting and golfing, how does he get anything done? I don't understand it. It's kind of like her new gig is going after the president. But is it time for the Clintons to take a hint and take a step back from politics for the good of their party? Here now to debate that, former New York Congresswoman Dr. Nan Hayworth and Democratic strategist uh, Chuck Roca. Guys, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Thanks, good morning. Friend. Chuck, we'll start with you. Uh, it's been a bizarre couple of weeks for the Clintons. Uh, we had the Donna Brazil book come out that makes Hillary look really bad. And now you've got a lot of people calling Bill Clinton a rapist, even Democrats themselves. It was a bizarre time for them to go up on the stage, didn't you think? Uh, yeah, I did. And I think that as American citizens, they have every right to speak out. They have every right to hold their government accountable and go down all of those lanes. But look, I've been a lifelong Democrat. And as you know, as a Bernie guy, it's kind of unique for me to talk about this situation. But they have done a lot of wonderful things for the party. But the party should evolve and move on to other things. And there's a whole generations of Americans who grew up under Barack Obama who really don't know anything about the Clintons except for what you just said and what she yeah. let Donald Trump put her in the corner as. So as a party and as a leader, of the party now, me, I would like to see the next generation of our leaders step up. Okay. Uh, and Nan, over to you. Uh, what did you make of them up on the stage? I mean, in the light of what we learned the last couple of weeks? Well, you know, unfortunately, uh, Hillary Clinton and her campaign was a masterwork of not taking the hint. Uh, and the Clintons, between her loss and her obsessive scab picking and ranting about Russian controlled Macedonian programmers, uh, it, it, they, they've become a toxic asset, especially mm. now that all these allegations of sexual misconduct are flying especially toward the left and Senator Franken has become the poster uh, man child man child really for that kind of abuse so now they're in retrospect they have to express politically this anguish this newfound anguish and contempt for Bill Clinton's behavior so they have just become a toxic asset that I think the Democrats do have to cleave themselves from yeah it's, it's a, certainly a conversation with the, the sexual misconduct we've had Roy Moore we have uh, Alfred Franken, and we've yeah. this has all brought a light on to Bill Clinton as well. Let's go to a tweet from uh, Donald Trump from the president here from uh, just a little while ago. Crooked Hillary Clinton is the worst and biggest loser of all time. She just can't stop, which is so good for the Republican Party. <laughs> Hillary, get on with your life and give it another try in three years, daring her to make a comeback and try and, and pull it off again in 2020. Mm -hmm. Chuck, what do you say to that? I mean, is it somewhat unbecoming to see Hillary Clinton in this light? I think toxic access is a little bit a uh, step too far. I think that her and Bill have done a lot of things back in the 80s and 90s that were great for the party. I lived through those economic booms that we all benefited from. But like any good thing in life, when I first bought a cell phone, it was in a bag and I carried it around in my truck and now I can just set it in my ear. You have to evolve <laughs> with things and change every day to make things more modern. And what's the, the new thing, right? So we need to move on in no disrespect to them because I think they've done good things, but it's time for a change in our party. Okay. No, we yeah, understand that. Nan, over to you. I I mean, do you, do you think she's a, just a sore loser here? I mean, she's so defensive oh, about this. It, it, she clearly failed to understand the American electorate, doesn't understand now that it's time for her to leave the stage. And it really is sad and pathetic at this point, but it's also damaging for the Democrats. And, you know, I agree with Chuck. The Clintons definitely were the mainstays, and they were the ones who satisfied, especially the cronies and the corporatists. They brought in a lot of money with this kind of soothing sure. combination of appropriate issues, advocacy, but also so Wall Street savvy, you know, they knew how to sure. satisfy the moneyed class. Uh, that's all going to go away now with the departure of the Clintons. And yeah. uh, the money is not going to come in, uh, that, you know, brought in by them. So I think in some ways the Democrats are going to miss that because they really were kind of the uh, grown-ups in the room in a lot of ways. Yeah. Chuck, looking ahead to, to 2018 and, and, and also very much so 2020, the future for the Democratic Party. I mean, you, you've got, uh, I mean, who's on the bench? and who is 
capable of handling that job. I think you have a lot of young people that might not be able to handle it, but then you've got a lot of old guard people too, and then you've got Bernie Sanders as well. You know, I fight this every day in my own party, and I love my party, and I've been a yellow dog Democrat for a long time, but our average leadership in Congress is 77 years old. Yeah. We have a lot of wonderful young Congress people coming up, like Ruben Gallego, a veteran who fought in Iraq, who's a congressman from Arizona, Tulsi Gabbard, also a vet. We have a lot of wonderful people bubbling up, but we have to make room for their voices and make our party expand and talk about economic relief to the middle class like Donald Trump did to get those voters back into our party. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Bernie's probably your most popular guy. I just wonder if he's age-wise, is he going to be right for what you guys are you looking for? You know what? For, if, so. he, if his health holds up, you can't hope yeah. Bernie back. He's got a message. Yeah, he it's, certainly does. Yeah, the, Bernie Sanders' problem is not his, his age, but the fact that, unfortunately, the policies he is espousing absolutely do not work. Yeah. And that is the Democrats' biggest challenge, really, is to come forward with policies that actually will grow the economy and what President Trump is doing now is just that so he's further proving that the Clintons really you know they're not the way yeah. to go right now guys thanks so much for coming on this morning we appreciate it happy Monday good morning Thank 39